is going on, ladies and gentlemen, children and adults and teen. I don't know. I'm not very good at this. Um, today we're going to be going over the Rule 20 for uh, DMs. As you can see, we got a bit of a different host and a bit of a different background. So you're going to be joining me from my room and uh, I'll kind of be walking you through this process myself. But uh, anyway, introductions aside, let's get right into it. I'll be going over a couple things. Uh, maps, characters, music, um, players, journals, and kind of general dynamic lighting. Dynamic lighting can get a bit tricky, so um, I'll be going over the general stuff for that as well. Um, some things to point out with maps. Uh, you can get maps with Patreon. You can get maps by Googling Roll20 Maps and then looking for a specific one. Uh, there is also a Discord server made by the beautiful people at the Naruto 5e server, um, and it has everything labeled, multi-map sets, forests, and fields, greenlands, encampments, taverns and inns, arenas, ruins, you can even get to cyberpunk stuff, Naruto stuff, uh, you know, some of them, I will say, are like this, they're empty, um, everybody posts their maps and it has maps to be sorted. Um, the admins here and the contributors here are amazing and they do update this as well as quick as they can. Um, I appreciate all their help. They have been a huge help for our campaigns and things of that nature for uh, maps. Next, let's say you found your map. I found this cool map of this arena right here. Uh, or not this arena, more like a courtyard. Uh, you want to make sure you're on the map and background section. Then you're going to want to make it bigger. Uh, this, as you can see, has a preset grid already on the map. Uh, what, you're gonna, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna right click, advanced, align to grid, and it will basically be a, you have to select a three by three. It gets a bit tricky sometimes, um, but you're gonna wanna select a three by three, um, align to grid. then move it so it's in the corner right here uh, you're gonna want to look a bit closer uh, and you're gonna maybe have to do this a couple times um, it, it gets a bit easier with practice but even I still mess it up sometimes um, there you go that looks like it did it um, and right there you're gonna have your map um, and it's gonna be aligned to the grid Next will be uh, characters. So for this character, I'm gonna use someone from our usual series who is going to be Kai. Um, Kai, you can put the name here. Uh, in player's journals basically means they'll be able to bring them out and see their tokens and stuff and their settings. Um, so you're basically gonna only wanna do this for if they have a familiar or a companion, um, a party pet maybe and their own characters. That's gonna be kind of about it. Uh, can be edited and controlled by is a bit more um, controversial. Uh, some people don't like players seeing the health bar or the mana bar. If you're like that, boom, keep that empty. Uh, don't, don't let anybody see that. Um, for me, I like letting them see the health bar and the mana as Naruto, as a ninja, uh, you can tell how much chakra someone has and what type of aura they have so in my mind that kind of checks out to being able to see how strong they are uh, you can click all players and now all players will be able to see um, Kai's health bar chakra and any other thing he may have as in temporary hit points and stuff like that uh, right here this top one avatar this will change what it looks like in the journal if this bottom one will change what it looks like on the map uh, this top one I basically only use for important characters. Uh, if it's something like a guard or something, I won't go through the trouble. If it is an important character, obviously I just match it with what the token is usually. Um, then you can go into edit token properties. You can make the health bar here, the chakra bar here. And then usually for an Naruto 5e, this is used for temp HP, but for d d it can be used for, well, temp HP too actually, and any other things you may have, uh, special mana, um, things a spell might provide, something like that. Uh, dynamic lighting is uh, character based as well. I usually give them vision, obviously, they can see. Um, this will be good if it's a daytime map. 
uh, night vision, if they have any night vision, limited field of view. This will basically provide a cone instead of the usual circle you have seen in our campaigns. Uh, bright light is what provides the circle. Um, we just, I just do bright light. It, it seems to be a bit easier. Uh, low light if they're using fire jutsu and maybe you want to give them a slightly bigger circle, but don't want to give them uh, the clear uh, light that bright light gives. Um, the directional light will obviously be where it's coming from. Uh, the light color, um, total light, light multiplier. Uh, you kind of have to fiddle with this a little bit to see what you like. Uh, some people like the cone because like, you're facing forward. Uh, some people like the bright light because it's just a circle. Some people um, want to have them hold the torch. So then the torch has the light and not the character, things like that. Um, but more or less, we can leave it like that and that will be Kai. So yeah, uh, then once you have Kai ready, you can bring Kai out on and he will look like this. He is not meant to be this big, to be clear. I just made him this big so it's a bit easier. Uh, oh, actually I messed up, but good thing I did. Uh, you're gonna wanna make sure it's objects and tokens that are selected. Uh, and then he will appear with the health bar and the name. If it's back, if map and backgrounds, it will look a bit weird. Uh, but it will basically have this little bright light that we put on him. Uh, so we can see I've made this uh, to enable this. You're going to want to go to settings, by the way, and dynamic lighting and turn it on uh, here. You can click Explorer mode, which basically leaves the map discovered. And as they move it, it will leave a trail behind. But the cool thing is that you can put creatures here moving up on the party and they won't see it. So that's pretty cool. Um, if you if you turn this off, um, then you can turn something on like daylight mode, uh, where it is just day. Um, the only things that they won't be able to see through are going to be things like walls. Uh, so if you go here to the dynamic lighting section and you go to polygon line, you can make walls. So here we'll make this bush really tall. Um, you know, not perfect, but for the sake of demonstration, boom. And now you can't see past that bush because it is very tall. Um, and as they go around it, you'll be able to see that they can see what there. You can see what they see, uh, which will be pretty cool. Um, that's kind of the general stuff of dynamic lighting. They have doors now, which are really cool. Um, it requires you to restrict player movement, obviously, uh, but you can make a door and then you can unlock the door or make it a secret door so they can't see the door icon and have it open and then they can see. It's really cool, actually, uh, messing around with this for a little bit. Um, but I mean, I'm just a nerd at the end of the day, so maybe you don't find it as cool. But anyway, for your dynamic lighting, basically, uh, you get your map, you just make the walls where you don't want them to see, you make the doors, you make the windows. Uh, if it's a cave, you can make a little torch here. Uh, this torch will have a certain amount of bright light, but you can change that so you can put um, 20 feet, low light 20 feet. Um, but this will be like a, a token basically that they can kind of like move around and mess with. Uh, you can put it on the dynamic uh, lighting tab as well and it will place it like where the torches are. So if I wanted like torches inside the bushes or torches like on top of them, um, they won't see the actual like torch, but they'll see the light emitting from them. So that can be kind of a cool thing you can mess around with. Moving on, we have uh, music. For music, you want to go to Manage Audio, make a new playlist. Uh, we can just make a new one. It'll create another one. Uh, you can make a track. Um, they actually have pretty good track songs here uh, in Competech, Battle Bards, Tabletop Audio. They actually have pretty good ones. We have a Naruto campaign though, so the problem with that is that we kind of need the Naruto soundtracks. And the Naruto soundtracks are, well, I mean, I'm sure you can figure out how to get them um to put it that way um it's not the hardest thing in the world but i have different anime openings here and different anime soundtracks um and that we use we actually use it during the campaign you guys can't hear it unfortunately because it creates kind of a copyright issue um with youtube so we don't want any of that but yeah um that's kind of basically it for the general stuff of it um the drawings the uh, obviously the magnification, the ruler, which sets the distances of things, obviously. Um, the dynamic lighting, uh, turn order. Oh, that's another thing. So for things that have macros, um, the macros, it's 
best if you just look up roll 20 macros and you choose the one you want with DD, it's a bit easier because it has your character sheet built in with naruto 5e it's a bit harder because it doesn't it's unfortunately kind of the world we live in um so you're just gonna wanna uh, look the macros. This will be a turn order macro, uh, which is kind of like the simplest one to use. You just copy and paste a little macro and then copy and paste your initiative and that's basically it. It'll appear right there. Um, there, But there's also other ones for attacking or uh, using jutsu and stuff like that. Um, like I said, it's better just to look up the macros because um, I don't think you want me to spend another 20 minutes going parentheses, bracket, bracket, parentheses, tracker, end bracket, second parentheses, so uh, just look them up, copy and paste them, easiest thing you're going to do. Anyway guys, that is about it on the DM stuff. Uh, I kind of went through it quickly. If you have any questions, be sure to leave it in the comments or uh, join our Discord and I will answer personally. Um, if you guys need help with anything else, yeah, just let me know. Um, I can do a video on dynamic lighting specifically if you want me to get more in detail or into macros if you want me to get more in detail into that. Uh, but that's basically it from the DM side of you. Um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, just let me know. And that's about it. Uh, so I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.